Good morning. Welcome to Generations Church. We are so glad that all of you have joined us, whether you are in the building or joining us through Facebook Live. Thank you for being here with us today to worship our Savior together. I wanted to share with you a verse out of Romans chapter 8, verses 8. Verses 38 through 39, and it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want to encourage you today that no matter your past, no matter your mistakes, no matter whatever kind of hidden shame you're dealing with, no matter that dumb thing that you said to somebody the other day, no, nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So uh, be encouraged that you're loved today and um, just join us as we worship our savior today if you are joining us through facebook live you are um, about to be redirected to a new thing that we're trying today called lobby chat with pastor connie and Allie. and and um, i just want to encourage you to engage with one another today check on each other see how uh, people are doing if there's anything that they need or you can pray for or if there's anything you need and you need prayer for we want to be there for you also so let's pray and we will get started with worship today father i thank you for your great love for us lord that there is nothing that can separate us from your love thank you for how you laid down your life for us thank you father that um there is just nothing in our past or in our future that can keep us separated from your love lord there's no sin too great that you won't forgive lord that your grace is sufficient for us father i thank you that your word says that if we confess our sins that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and lord i pray that we would feel your cleansing today in jesus name lord help us to experience your love and your freedom today in the name of jesus and lord we just promise that we're going to give you all of the glory Thank you, Lord. We lift up the name of Jesus today, and we declare that you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, not just in the world, but in our lives. You're my King. You're my Lord. And Father, I pray that you would direct this service today, that you would speak directly to our hearts a word that we can hold on to that will encourage us and enable us to go live out the victorious life that you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you today that you're a good, good Father. And Lord, that you have good things for us. We thank you for that. Would you just tell the Lord over the next 10 seconds how much you love him? Lord, I love you. I honor you. I praise you for all the good things that you've done in my life. Amen. Would you be seated as we prepare to partake in the Lord's table together? You know, if you're online with us, you can have a few moments here as I prepare us to gather things together that maybe you want to partake in communion with us. And it's not what you get or what you use, it's what it means. Here in the room, we have many people that are here with us, socially, physically distanced, but they have prepackaged communion and uh, that they're going to partake with us together. You know, in preparation, this week for communion there was just one scripture and all of you probably have heard it many of you probably have it memorized that has been on my heart pertaining to communion and it's this John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life you know his love does not depend on your behavior his love does not depend on your choices. His love does not depend on your socioeconomic status. His love does not depend on your ethnicity. His love does not depend on whether you love him back or not. He loved you before he ever knew you. It says that God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And you know, that's the thing that I made an attempt this week to wrap my brain around was that God loved me before I ever knew of his sacrificial, 
fake death and burial and resurrection. And the way Jesus died was basically a method of torture, torture in the Roman Empire. And he suffered all of those things just for you, just for me. And when we celebrate communion, when we partake of the Lord's table together, we're going to partake of the elements together, but I call your attention to the bread that you have in your hand or the wafer, whatever it is. It represents the body of a suffering Savior that took all the grief, all the sorrow, all the rejection, all the anxiety, all the fear, all of the pressures of your life that come to you. He took those on the cross so you wouldn't have to carry them. So if you're here and because of, of uh, you're in the building or you're online and you've experienced some for, form of emotional uh, grief in this process of COVID-19, would you just surrender that to the Lord today? Because I promise you, when he died on the cross, he took it for you. He gathered his disciples together and he said, whenever you do this, remember me. So Lord, we hold this bread in our hand and we remember the suffering that you went through. The chastisement of our peace was put upon you. So you took all of the hurt and all of the pain so that we could have peace. Say it with me right now. Say, Lord, I receive your peace because of what you did for me. Let's partake together. In the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this is the covenant, the new covenant in my blood. Again, the suffering Savior endured torture beyond in our wildest imaginations. And that blood that was shed on that cross was so that you and I could experience forgiveness. And remember, it doesn't depend on how good you've been or how bad you've been. Did you get good enough to receive it? No. He did it whether you deserved it or not. As a matter of fact, none of us deserved it. None of us deserve it. But we can receive it. So if you have a need for forgiveness today, would you just express that to the Savior? And it's so simple. He said, if you confess it, you can receive forgiveness. Confess your sins to me, and I will be faithful and just to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So Lord, we just take a moment to cleanse our hearts today. Let's take a moment of silence. If there's anything you need to let go of, you need to ask God to forgive you of, just do it right now. Thank you, Lord. We receive that forgiveness today. We partake of this element knowing that it is the blood that washes away our sin. In Jesus' name. Pastor Connie's coming to lead us in prayer for our nation and our government. And if you have any requests that you want us to pray for and you feel like you can put them in the feed if you're online just put them there and I promise you we will pray for them if it's something you need to put in a private spot you just go ahead and do that as well you can reach out to us in an inbox message and we will make sure you are covered in prayer let's just agree in prayer this morning Lord we lift up our nation this morning we lift up our president and those all those in authority over us Lord we ask that they would have godly wisdom as they make decisions that concern us, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, that we put our hope and our trust in you. Lord, we pray for our soldiers. We pray for first responders. Lord, those around the world and those right here in our city, Father, that you would protect them. Lord, doctors and nurses that have gone beyond what they normally do, I pray that they would be emotionally, physically, mentally strong, Father. And Lord, I pray that you would be near. Lord, be near to people that are in extreme situations right now, having to make uh, decisions about life and death. Lord, be close to them, Lord, that they would hear your voice, Lord, that they would be your representatives in our world, Lord. And we pray over our missionaries right now, God. 
all over the world, Lord, we pray that they would be strong, they would be courageous, they would have hope and peace, and that they would reap a harvest of souls in the nations that they're in, Lord. Provide for them beyond anything that they could ever imagine, Lord. And Lord, we just lift up people right here in our own body, Lord. Lord, we pray for... Um, Christy, who's just been diagnosed with cancer that's related to Beverly. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for healing in her body. We stand against cancer today. Lord, we pray for Michael Scott, Lord, that he would be whole and healed in his body. We pray over Perlene's back today, Lord. It would be strengthened, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, those that are um, in assisted living or in nursing homes, we pray for them today, Lord, that they would feel hope, encouragement, that they would know that they are not alone, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for drawing close to them today, Lord. This is such a difficult time for them. And, Lord, I thank you that you are present with them, Lord. And, Lord, as we go on with this service today, Lord, I pray that each one of us will be encouraged, that we'll be challenged in your word today. And, Lord, I thank you that you are faithful to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We're so glad y'all are all here in the building, or if you're online today, and uh, if you're a first-time guest, there are uh, visitor mugs right outside the building as you go out, as you go out in the foyer, and you can pick one up, or if you're online, you can let us know, you can get on our website or on our app and connect with us, or right there in the stream, and you can message us. There's many ways to get a hold of us, and we will deliver a mug to you. And we've got several things going on this week, most of them online, but one that's very important that has moved offline is youth will be back at mine and Ed's house this week. We're going to have some swimming and a cookout and have some fun with the kids. If we have a lot of kids, don't worry. We're going to kind of keep them a little bit, you know, apart. Normally, we don't really have to worry about them totally getting in each other's faces. And so we're excited, though, to get them back together. You know, our youth, uh, when you're a teenager, that's probably one of your most social times of life. And so we want to make sure that our youth are staying encouraged and staying strong. So they'll be back at our house, 7905 Louisville Avenue this week, 6.30 p.m., and so we'll see them there. And then men have watermark on Tuesday morning at 6.15 here in the building and a Zoom meeting. You can message us for an invite. Then we have ladies' Bible studies on 7 a.m. and 8 p.m. on Thursday night, and you can message us for an invite. You will be getting camp information for youth camp this week, and you've probably already gotten kids' camp information. But if you need information about camps going on in June, please contact us. And here comes a video for us for Memorial Day. Amen. Well, we do remember and we will never forget. And we're so thankful for um, all the people that have laid down their lives so that we could be free. Amen. Amen.
Okay, well, I am excited to get to share another kid's message with you this week. And, um, you know, I think these times are probably dwindling down a little as we start to open up our kids' classes every week. Uh, The plan right now is to start opening up another classroom every week. So next week, uh, this week we've got birth through ages two open up and next week we will have the three and four year old class open as well so um parents bring your families back to church (laughs) we miss seeing y'all and um i know it's hard whenever you've got little ones try you're trying to corral um, and listen to a service but we're so glad that all of you are here with us today so our theme for this month in gen kids is go everybody say go All right, let's try that one more time. Everybody say go. All right. We are talking about how God helps us go and tell other people about how much he loves them. And our important memory verse for this month is Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Y'all can read along or say it with me if you haven't memorized. It says, let your light shine before others. Oh, hold on. Let's go back. I need help here, y'all. Okay, here we go. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Amen. So today we are talking about how God will protect our hearts and our minds. And so I want to know if any of you kiddos or adults out there like superheroes, are any of you superhero fans anybody oh yeah we have a few okay i i'm thinking some of you may have like some superhero pajamas anybody children uh, adults you don't have to answer and incriminate yourselves we have some kids with superhero we love superheroes right superheroes have all kinds of special powers that we think are really cool some some of them might have super speed or somebody might have super strength that some of them might have the power to be invisible or the um, the power to fly that's really cool right but whatever power they have it seems like they all have one main job and that is to protect Their job is to protect the people, right? Batman protects the people of Gotham City, and Superman protects the people of Metropolis, and the Avengers, they protect all of us, I guess, in the whole world. Their job is to protect people. That's what they do. But Jesus actually can protect us way better than any superheroes can. He doesn't just protect our bodies. He also protects our hearts and our minds. So let's take a look at our video for this week that talks about how God protects us from the scriptures from Philippians chapter 4. Hey, I'm glad you're here today. Were you excited to come? I hope you were. Sometimes we have to go places we're not very excited to visit. So it's fun to go on journeys to fun places. But do you know what? I know a story about a guy named Paul who once went on a very difficult journey. It was scary at first, but Paul found a way to be joyful even when things were scary and not fun at all. Do you want to hear the story? Great! Paul was a man who went all over the world and told lots of people about Jesus. But then Paul was put in prison because the leaders did not want Paul to talk about Jesus. Scary! But when he was in prison, Paul decided to sing happy, joyful songs to Jesus. You and I might never go to jail for telling people about Jesus, but there might be other reasons why we might feel scared or sad. But when we do, God helps us find joy anyway. Can you show me your happy face? Great job! We can show we are joyful when we trust God to take care of us. Even when we're scared, we can talk to God. Can you hold your hands like you're praying? Great job! Now, 
Can you open your hands like you're reading a book? You did it! The Bible makes a promise that we can have peace and joy when we trust in God. Sometimes our journeys can be difficult, but God still gives us strength to go. Show me your muscles! I know that God will protect my heart and help me be joyful no matter what happens. I know that God will protect my mind and help me not to worry. God will protect my heart and mind. So let's go! All right, what does it mean that God will protect our hearts and our minds? Today we are looking at the true story of a man named Paul, and he lived all the way back in Bible times, and he talks to us in several different books of the New Testament, and today we are looking at what he says to us in the Bible in Philippians chapter 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Everybody say, rejoice. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God that passes understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So did you hear what he said in verse 4? He told us to rejoice in God always, and then this must be so important, he had to say it again. He said, rejoice. And rejoice means to feel or show joy. So I wonder where, if he was talking about rejoicing, where do y'all think he was at this time? Where do you think he was, Emmett, when he was writing this letter to the Philippians and to us? Do you think he was maybe sitting out by the pool, drinking a lemonade, getting some sun? Do you think that's what he was doing? Or maybe he was lounging on the beach with under an umbrella and somebody was feeding him grapes or maybe he was like in a mountain cabin relaxing with the sound of the stream passing by do y'all think do y'all think he was just in a really cool place when he could write something like this do you think he wasn't. He actually, he was in jail whenever he wrote this to us. And can you imagine, I think it would be really hard for me to have this attitude of rejoicing if I was in jail. Sometimes we go through hard things, right? But Paul is telling us it is possible for us to rejoice and have joy even when we are dealing with really hard things. Even sometimes things that aren't fair, like what Paul was going through. It wasn't fair for him to be in jail. But um, we really can rejoice. And did you hear the scripture that says that peace that passes understanding will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus? Sometimes Sometimes the world could look at us and see what we're going through and say, it just doesn't make any sense at all that you would have peace in the middle of this, you know. But that's part of how we can reach people with the good news of God's love is because we can be people who have joy and have peace even in the midst of really hard circumstances. And when other people who don't know Jesus see what's going on in our lives and see our attitudes and how we we respond to those hard things, then God opens up a door for us to be able to say, hey, I couldn't have any peace at all. I would not be okay right now if I did not know that God loves me and that he's going to take care of me. And you can do that too. You can rejoice even in the middle of really hard things, even if there's crazy things going on in your families or in your schools like there are right now. No matter uh, the hard things you go through, if you will put your trust and your faith in God, he will give you peace that passes understanding. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all pray with me. Father, I just thank you that your word is true, but that sometimes, Father, we have to use your word like a weapon, and it's got to be what we use to fight with. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to fight with your word today. If we're struggling, if any of these kids are just struggling to have peace, Lord, to have joy, that their lives have been totally uprooted and changed and nothing has been normal or a normal 
physical routine like um, it should be, Father, but I just declare that your peace that passes understanding guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And Father, just everything that would try to come against us, chaos and disorder, strife, or just any kind of fear and insecurity that would try to come into these kids or any people listening to the sound of my voice, Father, I just declare that your word is true and that your peace that passes understanding, it guards our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for how you protect us. Thank you that you're faithful and we can put all of our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Thank you, Pastor Lacey, for a great children's message. I hope you all enjoy those as much as I do. I enjoy uh, getting to watch them and see how creative our children's ministry is. Hadn't our children's ministry done a great job during this pandemic, reaching out to all of your kids and uh, the gift bags? There's people here in the sanctuary that uh, sitting at tables with their children, got their little activity bag, got their Capri Sun. Woo-woo! Great job. Gen Kids, they're doing an awesome job and getting us ready. Well, would you stand up on your feet with me today as we prepare? Those of you that are online with us, we appreciate you being there online with us and getting uh, watching. And we're just going to read the Word of God together where we started last week. Our title is Essentials for Christ Followers. And <clears throat> we're going to read straight from the Message Bible today. And um, so it's a, it's a Eugene Peterson did a great job transla translating the Bible into some everyday language. He said, so don't turn a deaf ear to those, these gracious words. If those ignored, those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it. Let me just stop right there and say that's a reference to when uh, God gave the Ten Commandments the first time on Mount Sinai. And there was smoke around the mountain, the ground shook, and they heard God's voice from the mountain. What will happen to us if we turn our backs on heavenly warnings? His voice that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us quite plainly, he'll also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern. He's talking about the last days. And you know, one of the things, one of the earmarks of the last days is pestilence, disease. It's what we're going through right now. We're closer to Jesus coming back now than we've ever been. He says this, the phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable, are you ready for it? The unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. I don't know about you, but I know that in this time, this last 60 days, that there have been some things that I wasn't able to do that just made things go by the wayside. Uh, and that which was essential, that was important, whether it's uh, eating a family meal or better communication between husband and wives. And I know uh, you parents that have been, been teacher, parent, coach, everything, there's been some things that you've realized that were more essential to parenting than you ever have in your life. And so we're wanting to see that that the, the purpose of this series of messages is to remove the clutter, the junk, the religious stuff that doesn't need to be there. Pray with me. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the people that are hearing my voice today in the room. Uh, Lord, we thank you that they're physically distanced. And, and Lord, we thank you that we're enjoying the presence of God in the house of God. Thank you for a president that declared churches are essential. And Lord, we thank you for those that are with us online. Lord, may they, we celebrate them. We thank you for technology, that they can hear the word of God with clarity and authority. And Lord, I pray that you use me today, that my mouth would be your mouth. And I promise to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for what you do as a result of the spoken word of God. And everybody said, Amen. you can be seated. I'm really interested in this series to make sure that everybody knows Wherever you're sitting, if you're sitting in the room with me or if you're walk, watching online or if you watch this later, it is very important to Pastor Ed that you know that every one of you is essential. You know, in our culture today, people have been told that their job was non-essential. Therefore, they were non-essential or they got furloughed or something. They've been devalued. And I'm just here to tell you, we said it during communion, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son every 
life is valuable to God, and he wants you to know that you are essential. Last week, we talked about your faith. We talked about the essentials of the Christ followers being your faith. Faith to be saved, faith to live by, and faith for miracles. We found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7 <clears throat> that we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't go by our feelings. We go by our faith. But, and I ask this question, does your faith travel with you? Does it travel to your future? Does it travel to your family? Does it travel to your friends? And in making that illustration, I was trying to get across, and, and I carried my backpack. I've still got it with me today. And uh, this is what I pack when I go on a long journey. When I go overseas, like, I'm not, I'll just give you an example. I've been to Mongolia 10 times to do missions work. And when I fly to Mongolia, the flight from Dallas to either Beijing or to Korea, I've done both. To so it's about a 14 to 16 hour flight. And this little bag is so, so important. It's, yes, I pack all of my clothing necessities, my toothbrush, but that's kind of standard. But what goes in here, one of the big things we talked about last week was when you get your faith, go, you have a passport that gets you out of the country or gets you back in the country. And what my passport is, it's my identity. It tells everybody who I am. My blue passport tells everybody I'm an American. And you can tell that when you're standing in line. People get their passports out. You know who's American and who's not by looking at that blue passport. And the passport to a new life is your life in Christ, is your faith. When you said yes to Jesus, I believe that you died, buried, and were resurrected, and it was just for me. You got a passport to a new life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 says that if any man is in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Somebody say amen. amen. So does your faith travel with you? Well, here's another piece that I make sure it's an essential. And it, it, it never comes out of this. These two things never come out of this bag. Because when I get ready to go on a trip, I, I don't want them scattered somewhere and not be able to find them. The other thing that is really important to me is my headphones. And I plug these into my computer or sometimes I, I plug them right into my phone because it has that kind of jack down at the bottom of it. And I put these on and I listen to praise and worship music. I listen to sermons. Uh, I've, I even watched a movie or two that I've downloaded on my phone. But the key is, is that my headphones block out all the white noise on the airplane. It blocks out the people talking. And here's what we're talking about today. Talking about the essentials, does your faith travel? I want to talk about the essential of renewal. Everybody say renewal. Renewal is a concept that is found in the Bible that uh, some people would call it revival. I call it renewal. Some people would call it an awakening. Awakening, I call it renewal. They're all the same thing. It's where something gets stirred up again. You know, we didn't read it, but our text today says that our God, the Latin, Hebrews 12, 29, says our God is a consuming fire. And what, he do, what he's been doing, I believe, is burning out the non-essentials because he is a consuming fire. He's been getting rid of some of the junk in your life and in my life. Eugene Peterson said in describing the Christian faith, he said, the Christian faith is long obedience in the same direction. Say that with me. It's on the screen. Say it out loud with me. One, two, three. Long obedience in the same direction. That's faith. It's, it's a marathon, folks. It's not a sprint. It's, it's not something you do for a short while and you get over it. You, it, it you're going for it. And, and that's what we need to see that kind of renewal that allows us to stay obedient over a long period of time. Corey Ten Boom wrote a book called The Hiding Place. It's been written a long time. She's gone home to her reward, gone home to the Lord, but she was a, <clears throat> in a Nazi war camp, Ravensbrück concentration camp. For why she was there was because her and her family uh, allowed Jewish people to stay in their home to hide from the Germans, from the Nazis. And they, when they found that out, they took her whole family. Uh, she is the sole survivor of her family. And she talked about the faith that it took. And when she's talking about faith, she says that faith sees the invisible, faith believes the unbelievable, and faith receives the impossible. Wow. 
Now, that's, how do you get that? Well, first of all, you got to have a, a faith. You get your passport to a new life. But when you're in a concentration camp, you got to shut out all the white noise. You got to shut out all the death and all the destruction and all the bad things going on around you. And you see, that's, that's the only way you and I are going to experience revival, renewal, awakening in this day and this hour. If you and I are able to shut out all the white noise of all the junk, all the stuff that's being reported, all the polit- political stuff, all the secular stuff, all of the things that are going on in our world. You know what you don't hear very much about today, but because of email and because of, uh, you see, you've got to find the right sources. Did you know, come this fall, that we have a real opportunity of overturning the Roe v. Wade uh, abortion law and making abortions illegal in our country again. I mean, you, you, you don't have to dig real hard to find this, but I guarantee you, you're not going to hear it on ABC, NBC, CBS. At this point, I haven't even heard anybody talking about it on Fox News. But you know what? You've got to shut out the stuff that will derail or delay you in your walk with God. And the only way to do that is to re... Now, follow with me. Why is this essential? Because I shut out stuff that I don't want to hear, and I get to control what I do hear. That's revival. That's renewal. That's awakening when you're controlling the input that's coming into you. And the Bible talks about this. The Apostle Paul made some very clear references to this. Look with me at Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 from the New Living Translation. I love this. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world. How many of you know I could just stop and preach right there? There's got to be a difference between a Christ follower and someone that is not. But you know what? Some days you can't. That's why, that's why I don't call myself a Christian anymore. Because some people wear a name tag that says Christian. And they're a Christian on Sunday. They got their Christian name tag on. But on Monday through Friday or Saturday, they've got their world name tag on. Don't copy the customs and behaviors of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul tells the Corinthian church, he says, we are human. We don't wage war as humans do. He's saying, as a Christ follower, we're a human being, but that's not how we fight. We fight our battles on a different level. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to lock down the strongholds of the human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Listen to this last sentence. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. I think it's common knowledge to all of us in this room, young and old alike. Lots of thoughts come through our brain every day. Thousands and thousands of thoughts come into our brain. Which ones do you let stay there? Again, it's your choice. You have to plug in to the right source, and you have to be plugged in to the right place to hear what you keep and what you don't keep. Because what you need to do is you need to capture certain thoughts and throw them away. It's not that you had the thought that it's a sin. It's that it lives inside you and you act on it. I want to teach you something, and and I can't believe I didn't say this in the first service, and and that's why we'll put online uh, the, the second service. In our lives, all actions are preceded by thoughts. So whatever you're thinking, whatever you're plugged into, that's what you're doing. And if you don't want to copy the customs and behaviors of the world, you want to transform your mind, you want to capture your thoughts so that what you're thinking is what you're doing. If you're always angry, if you're always bitter, you've got stuff coming out of your mouth that's angry and bitter. If you're, as Pastor Lacey taught taught the children, if you're full of rejoicing, even when you're in prison, you write books like Philippians that change the world because you were putting the right stuff in your brain while you were in prison. You see, we choose what we think. And here's the alternative. Listen to this. Jesus said this about Satan. For you are the children of your father, the devil, and you love to do evil things, the the evil things he does. He was a murderer from the beginning. 
He was always hated, has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character for he is a liar and the father of lies. Do you listen to, do you, what do you have? What's coming in? What is essential for you to hear God's voice? We don't want to listen to lies. And I want to dispel, I want to put away, I want to capture, I want to, uh, to use another term, I want to bulldoze some thoughts to you. For five years, Generations Church rented a building at 3838 50th Street here in Lubbock, Texas. And I've lived in Lubbock most of my life with the exception of three years when I went to college. And in this location at 3838 50th Street, at one time there was a golf shop. You could go buy golf clubs, golf apparel. There was a restaurant. Then there was another restaurant. And then there was another restaurant. Then there was a nightclub. And then there was a restaurant. I remember this one because I ate at this one, the Elephant Bar. Uh, and then there was, then I think there were a couple more things that went in there. And then there was a dress shop. Uh, but before the dress shop bought, bought it, the owner of that dress shop, that high-end women's clothing store, that gentleman, he bulldozed the building. He leveled it, plumbing, everything, and built a brand new structure there. Now, he went bankrupt, and we rented that building for five years, and now they're, it's a physical therapy place for the last five years. It's, they've been there. But here's my thought. In bulldozing something, they took that building down to the foundation and started over. I want to use the term with you. I want to talk to you about five thought patterns that we need to bulldoze in our lives. We need to change the way we think so that we can, so that the only things that remain, as the writer of Hebrews said, are the essential things. We want to get rid of the junk, get rid of the non-essential things in our thinking. Get rid of the negative thinking. Number one. I am stuck where I am. No, you're not. That's a lie. If you're sitting in this room with me, or if you're online listening in the comfort of your living room with a cup of coffee or a soft drink, you are not stuck. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pastor. They told me I had to shelter in place. They told me I had to quarantine, and I, I have been stuck. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about where you're going in life. The direction you're pointed. If you're thinking you're stuck in your job, you're stuck in a marriage, you're, you're stuck in this or you're stuck in that, listen, your thinking is not right. Jesus always, always gave us hope for a brighter future. If you read the writings, the sermons, the messages of Jesus whether, it was, whether he was asking, what can I do for you to a leper or to a blind man? Jesus was always trying to elevate people's lives and get them to see something for their future. It's said in Isaiah chapter 55 and verses 8 and 9, God wrote these through the prophet Isaiah. He said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. They're nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. My ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. If you're stuck, think God's thoughts. Get, get on the level where God's thinking. Get on the level where God's seeing your life. And see through his eyes what he has planned for you. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says this. You will keep him in perfect peace who trusts in you. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. You need peace. Again, back to the children's message. Pastor Lady Lacey talks about peace that passes all understanding. Where do you get peace in the world we live? You fix your thoughts on Jesus. You fix your thoughts up where he's at. You get his perspective on your circumstances and on your situation. Colossians chapter 3, one more verse. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, hey, I got my passport. Hey, hey, pastor, I, I, I made a decision to follow Jesus. I made my decision when I was 18 years old. I made my decision. I got my passport to a new life. Maybe you did it last week. Maybe you're going to do it this week. But hey, guess what? I've got a new life in Christ. Listen to this. Act like it. Pursue the things over which God presides. In other words, quit going after the things of the world. Look what it says next. Don't shuffle around 
your eyes to the ground, absorbed into the things that are going on around here. Look what it says. Look up. Be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. See, that's why we worship at church. We don't just sing songs at church. Did you know that? Did you know that we're not just singing songs because we like music? Yeah, I like music. You like music. But why do we come to church and worship? Because it gets our eyes. It elevates what we're looking at. That's why we sing. You say, well, I don't sing well. Well, I don't either. But I love to worship God. I love to sing. I love to close my eyes and lift my hands and sing, because it gives me a different perspective. It gives me his perspective. You say, no, Pastor, I don't understand perspective, perception. I mean, those are all words, and, and you throw around these words. Well, let me help you. You know what perspective is? You know what God's perspective is? Have you ever flown from one city to another? You know, I've flown all over the world, but sometimes when you go, you fly in America, let's say you go from Dallas to Los Angeles, and you're 35,000 feet up in there. You're five miles high, and you can see things. I've flown over the Grand Canyon. I've never been to the Grand Canyon. I've flown over the Grand Canyon, and from five miles up, it is so cool. It's a different perspective. But how many of you know when you're going 70 miles an hour down I-20, that's another perspective? And it's pretty narrow. But when you're up at the five-mile perspective, I call that God's perspective because he sees everything. And we don't. So when you get your thoughts, here's the thing. If you're sitting there in this room with me or you're watching online and you're thinking you're stuck, no, no, no. Get your eyes up. Look up where Jesus is. Let him help you. There was a lady in the New Testament I talked about this story briefly last week, and I'm going to talk about it again today. It's found in Mark chapter 5. She was a woman. She had three strikes against her. Number one, she was a woman, and women weren't valued in that culture. Number two, she was sick. She had an internal bleeding issue, which made her ceremonially unclean. The third thing was she spent every penny she had on doctors who did not help her. She had three strikes. You're out. She was probably homeless. And she listened to Mark chapter 5 and verse 27. It says, and she heard about Jesus. She slipped in from behind and touched his robe. And listen to verse 28. She was thinking to herself. Thinking precedes what? Actions. She had a thought. She had a higher thought. She had been stuck for 12 years. And because she had heard about Jesus, she had just heard about him. It elevated her thinking to the point, she said, if I can just touch his robe, I will get well. Do you know what? People need to hear about Jesus. They need to hear about your testimony. They need to hear your story that following Christ helped you elevate your thinking, got you out of the pit that you were in. So guess what happened? She touched his garment. She said, if I can put a finger on his robe, I can get well. And the moment she did it, power went out from Jesus and she was healed. She elevated her thinking. She was not, look at me, everybody look in here, look at me. She was not stuck. For 12 years, stuck, 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 poor, homeless. All of a sudden, she heard about Jesus and she elevated her thinking, not stuck. God made a difference in her life. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody needed to hear that. Number two, the enemy has the upper hand. That's a lie. That's not true. Do we, we, we celebrated communion this morning. Do we not know that the war is over? Jesus wins. We're on the winning team. You say, well, man, Pastor, it doesn't feel like it. The, the man, the road's hard. The, the, it's hard. It's a grind. Well, I get that. But listen to what Colossians 2 says. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. So he took your sin and my sin, my past sins, my future sins, my present sins. He nailed them to the cross. And in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory. He took the power. He took away all of the enemy's power. Now, now granted, I'm going to give you this. He's still, the devil's still trying. Until the trumpet sounds... 
until Jesus tells Gabriel to blow the horn and until the new Jerusalem and the new heaven comes, the devil's going to be trying. That's his job. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Thanks be unto God who is, it says that if God be for us, who can be against us? We have victory. Come on, somebody help me preach here. <coughs> Philippians chapter 2 says, Therefore God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and gave him a name that is above every other name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every name on the earth, in the earth, under the earth, every tongue, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Pastor, I don't feel very victorious right now. <laughs> I heard somebody, they were trying to describe how low they felt. and Somebody said, I feel lower than whale poop. <laughs> that's pretty low it's pretty low but you know what all you got to do is change your thinking all you got to do is let your faith travel God it wants to give you victory he's on your side if somebody listening to me right now and that eternity that God put in the human heart, it's pulling on you right now. He's trying to pull you out of your depression. He's trying to pull you out of your fear. He's trying to pull you out of your anxiety because the devil does not win. Amen? Number three, nobody wants to hear the gospel anymore. It's just for us four and no more. Come on now. I, last time I checked, there's a lot of hurting people out there. Lots and lot people, people trapped in their fears, people trapped in their anxiety. Hey, we posted this week that we were going to open up our nurseries and, uh, for our birth through two years old. And, and I normally, I'm not a troller on Facebook. I don't just thumb through and, and, and see what's going on there because, it, I don't know, it just doesn't interest me. I'm not, I'm not trying to spy on people's lives. Uh, and, and not that if you do that, I, I get it. I get it. But, you know, and, and, but here's, here's what happened. I was on there this morning, just had a few moments before I got over here to the church before service. And I noticed on Generations Church Facebook page, two people were cracking on us because we had church today. And one of them says, y'all be safe. Who's sick of hearing be safe? No, it's on our sign that we're practicing safe. <laughs> Peanut galleries talking in again. Whoa. Shout. Church is back. Connie's talking from the front row. I love it. She keeps me straight. You know, Jesus' very first sermon, Luke 4, 18, you can look it up. He came to... Recovery of sight to the blind, heal the brokenhearted, set the captive free. His whole message was to touch hurting people. That was his mission statement. It was his first sermon. And you know what? In our culture today, there's a lot of people full of pain and hurt. You know, we've been online, Pastor Connie and myself, every day for 66 or 67 days. I think we've kind of lost count. But there's been one young person, one lady that has been online, and she got online because a member of our church said, hey, you need to get online and listen to my pastors. They're on every night at 7 o'clock, and this, this lady has gotten online, gotten online, gotten on. We've seen her name in the, the deal, and, and we've been praying for her and praying for her. Well, she got to, in a situation where she was a victim of some domestic violence, and she was hurting. She was reaching out. Listen, do you know, you guys are aware of so much more than I am as a pastor because people talk to you that won't talk to me and people are hurting. They need Jesus. And you know what? Our, our children's message today said this scripture. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 through 16 said, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Listen, 
Nowhere in that verse do you read the word pastor, preacher, uh, uh, apostle, prophet, teacher. It's talking about the common, everyday Jesus follower. You're a light. Where's the light in a hurting world? It's you. If it's not shining, it's you. You've hidden your light. And there are hurting people everywhere. And for, for you to think in your brain right now to be locked down by the, well, nobody wants to hear the gospel right now. Yes, they do. They need it. They don't need condemnation. They don't need hate. They need love. They need care. They need peace. They need strength. They need to hear your personal testimony. They can't call you a liar if you're telling them your story. It happened to you. You lived it. Come on now. Share your light with somebody else. But 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says this. If the good news we preach is hidden... Behind a veil or a curtain, it's hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is the God, notice the little g there, the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. There are people out there with blinders on, I guarantee you. They are unable to see the glorious, there it is, here's this phrase again. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. But you know what? Once they do hear it, there's eternity in their human heart. And they go, oh, that's what I've been missing. That's what I've been missing. That's what I've been needing. And when they see the way you used to live and the way you live now, they go, oh, I knew you when. See, that happens to me all the time because, man, people knew me in Lubbock, Texas when I was not a nice person. And they go, oh, 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 so you're a preacher? Huh? How did that happen? But you see, you don't need to worry about you. Here's what you, need to, here's what you need to know. There's no holes. Everybody check your hands. There's no holes in your hands. I'm nobody's savior. But my testimony, Romans 1.16 says this, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. It's the good news that Jesus died, buried, resurrected, seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what changes people's lives. And ever how you share that story, ever how the gospel that Jesus died, buried, resurrected, seated, ever how that filters through your personal testimony, your personal life, that's what changes people's lives. In Romans Again, it says in Romans 10, 13, it says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Man, it's not about jumping through hoops. It's not, I love what Eugene Peterson said, and we've been reading it, and I've said, let's get, rid, let's get, drill it down to the essentials. Let's get rid of all the religious junk so only the essentials remain. Man, we don't need you to sign a membership card and jump through 50 classes and hoops. Nobody, that's not how you get saved. You receive Jesus. And you began to be his disciple. You began to follow. You be a Christ follower. Here's number four. Here's the fourth thought that you need to bulldoze in your thinking and that I need to bulldoze in my thinking. There's no money to fund the spread of the gospel. Man, I've heard that from preachers since this thing started. I've heard preachers, oh man, my church is practically, I mean, nobody's, no, nobody's in the house. I, oh, we're, we're trying to get online, but there's no money. Everything's shut down. Man, you know what? I'm sitting here and I just gotta tell you, your generosity as a church has just absolutely blown me away. I am so privileged to be the pastor of Generations Church. I have never seen such generosity as I've seen in the last 60 days. We're, we're over budget. We're above budget. We're giving money away. We've helped widows. We've helped uh, people in nursing homes. We've helped, we've helped single mothers. We, we, I've got a letter here that's too, too long for me to read from one of our missionaries that we just, we, we give them a regular monthly offering. It's in our missions budget, and we kept up our missions budget, but we had some extra money, and we just decided, hey, we're going to send these guys an extra 300 bucks. How do we get it in their bank account? How do we get it to them? Well, we got this letter back just this week, and they told us that your 300 bucks we put your 300 bucks with 952 uh, <clears throat> more dollars, and the total was $1,252, and they told us all the things they did with that money because there were churches just like us that had extra and sent it to them. There was one pastor that 
needed surgery and couldn't get it because everything shut down. Well, they helped him go find an alternative place to get that surgery with the money that came in. They gave pastors groceries. You say, well, this isn't a testimony about people getting saved or you, you got up here, but there's no money to fund the spread of the gospel. Well, if we're not helping pastors in Guatemala be able to preach, I don't know what, what you're talking about. Those people, there's people in these villages in Guatemala. I've been there where this missionary is at. There's villages that sometimes the, the churches, uh, the Christian church, they're the only church in town. They're only gospel preaching church. There might be a big old Catholic church, but they're not preaching the gospel. Listen to these promises. This is what gets me excited. I love talking about this. Listen to this promise. As long, this is Genesis 8, 22. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. You see, we live in a farming region of the country. We understand seed time and harvest, planting and harvest. It's real. Listen to what, carrying that thought on, Proverbs eleven twenty five 25 says, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Man, I, Lord, I'm just, I just stop right now and I thank you for God's people in this house. I thank you, Lord, that they've been so generous. And, Lord, some people online, there's been people that, don't, uh, that have never been in the doors of Generations Church that have been amazingly generous. And, God, I thank you for them. I pray that they will be refreshed. Lord, I pray Luke 638 over them, that as they give, they will receive. You, your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shake together, and make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Listen, folks, look at the screen. I didn't write that. I didn't write it. I just read it. The amount you give is the amount you get back. If you're not putting any seed in the ground, I mean, this, is, this isn't some get-rich-quick scheme, folks. This is Bible. And I'm just telling you right now, to think... The thing that I love is I'm pastoring a church that has been over and above generous. What an honor. But this idea, this thought that there's no money to spread the gospel. You know, if, you, if, if you've got an idea in your head that God's running out of money somewhere <laughs> and he can't help you, he can't get you to where you need to go or do what you need to do, you need to bulldoze that kind of thinking. You need to take that kind of thinking down to the ground and start over. Because, you know, do you know how God spreads the gospel these days? It takes every human being. It takes every, it takes your $10 gift, it takes your a hundred dollar gift, it takes your five dollar gift, it takes our children's offering, it, it takes everything to do what we do. And I'm excited about it because generous people are going to be blessed. Here's the last one. Number five, God will never use me in a dynamic way. Man, that's a lie straight out of the pit of hell. I cannot believe people really believe that. I mean, I, I hope, Lord, help me, enable me to communicate this in a way that people listening to me, people in the room will understand that you want to use them, every one of them. It's not just the preacher that you want to use, God. It's not just the person on television or on the radio. It's not just the people on stage. God, help me to communicate with authority and clarity that you want to use every single person in this room. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says this. For we are God's masterpiece. And that's it. You, you just stop right there, man. I'm, I'm looking in this room. You're a masterpiece. Derek, you're a masterpiece. Audrey, you're a masterpiece. Heath, you're a masterpiece. There's not another one like you, buddy. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Get this. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, this, we could take this and go all the way back to point number one. I'm stuck. I was on fire for God one time. Now I'm not anymore. I'm stuck. No, 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 no. You say, no, I'm stuck. I, 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 was, I was single when I felt that way. Now I'm married. Now I've got kids. No, God is still using us. 
You say, I, I'm, I, I was on fire when I was in college and I went to this college group and this happened and then all of a sudden I met the love of my life and then we started having kids and then, wait, 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 wait. You know what? You've been training the next generation. You've been raising up the next generation that's gonna be world changers. Ask God to anoint you to do that. And you say, well, I'm not being used in a significant way. Yes, you are. Do you know who the least group of people, least reach people group in the United States of America is? It's Generation Z and the millennials. It's young people. They're the least age people group that has the gospel today. It's a mission field in America. And all of you parents, God's called you to that mission field. And he wants to use you in a significant way. I didn't say this in the first service and I was trying to speed through things and I've got a little more time in the second service. So I'm gonna slow down. Nod your head at me if that's okay. I don't talk about it a lot. It comes up every once in a while in sermons. But from 1994 to 2008, I had a privilege, not as a preacher, not as a pastor, but as a consultant to speak in public schools, junior highs, high schools, few elementary schools even, and universities about not having sex till you're married. And that 24 year 24, 25 year, it worked out. I still, still do a few schools every once in a while. But I, I figured out loosely, this number's low. This doesn't include camps or church services or con- church, any church thing, any religious thing that I did. Just on the public school level, I reached over 4 million teenagers. Oh, I could never do that. Listen, it's not about numbers. It's about changing lives. You say, well, you just got through throwing out this big number. Well, the reason I threw that out, because I thought to myself, God will never use me like that. And look what he did. All because I said yes. If you've been around Generations Church very long, you've heard this. Do for one what you want done for thousands. You read the Bible, you go through the Bible, you go through the Bible over and over and over, whether it was the woman we talked about today that was suffering for 12 years, you go through the Bible, whether it was the blind guy, whether it was the leper, whether it was the guy at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus did for one over and over and over and over. The widow of Nain, he's 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 on his way somewhere else and he interrupts a funeral and raises the dead. Do for one. So this idea that that God won't use me. Listen, you got to get to the place where you shut. It's essential. It's essential. You shut out all the white noise. And you you dial in. You get plugged in to what God is saying to you. He wants to use you in a significant way to touch this culture. Can I get an amen? Moses had a bunch of excuses. I can't talk. So he gave him his brother, Aaron, as his mouthpiece. Gideon, the angel, he has a supernatural appearance of God. He's in a wine press threshing wheat. He's hiding out. And God shows up and says, Hail thou mighty man of valor. Who are you talking to? I'm the least of the least. My family's the least in my tribe. My tribe is the least, and I'm the least in my tribe. I don't care. You're going to do And he ended up believing him. Excuses, excuses. Jeremiah, look at this. It says in Jeremiah chapter 1, it says, verse 4, the Lord gave me this message. I knew, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And I don't know why I didn't put it on the screen, but but Jeremiah chapter 1 and verses 4 through 5, I think it's about verse 8 that says, where he goes, well, I'm just a youth. And God says, don't say that again. 
Don't ever say that again. God wants to even use young people. So this idea that's got to be bulldozed in your mind and my mind that God never wants to do anything significant with your life. Jesus said in Luke 2, 49, he said, I must be about my father's business. I wear it as a reminder on my wrist. I must, I must, I must be about my father's business. You know how old Jesus was when he said that? 12. He got his I must when he was 12. We said, well, he was God. It doesn't make any difference. God, shut out all of the white noise in your life and get, get a new thought. Get your mind, quit copying the customs and behaviors of the world and plug in to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you in this hour, in this day, because he wants there to be an awakening. He wants there to be a revival, a renewal. I'm gonna put all five of these things on the screen so you can see them all at once. And I'm just going to declare it. I'm, if you want to say prophesy it, I'm going to prophesy it over you. If we can bulldoze these thoughts in our lives, if we can literally take things down to the ground and start over, we can have a renewal in our country. I think it's ripe. I think it's time. I believe it's time. And I believe God wants to use you. I believe that God wants to use me. You know, I don't know. I, I, I would love to believe and hope and think that, that churches will be full again. But, but you know what? This church, we've had to pivot. We've had to turn. We've had to change. We're doing things we never thought we'd do. And, and with the platforms that we're using, hopefully we can reach thousands and thousands of people, not hundreds. But I still believe that God wants to use you where you're at. And revival might not look like it used to. Renewal and a, a spiritual awakening in America might not look like thousands of people in seven different services on Sunday and a week-long move of the media. It might not look like that anymore. It might be a grassroots movement coming up in people's homes and in people's lives. But I believe that God wants to do it. And I believe that he's shaking some things. The text, Hebrews 12, they'll put that back on the screen for me. The text, he's shaking some things. The phrase, one last shaking, means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. As I come to a close today, I want you to think with me. I want you to go back to your experience with Jesus if you're in the room or if you're online and you remember when you gave your life to Christ for the very first time in your life. I want you to remember, it is, listen, I am not talking about joining a church. I'm not talking about getting your name on the roll. I'm talking about you joining the family of God. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship. I'm talking about you become, getting into the family of God. I'm talking about God being your father, Jesus being your big brother, and the Holy Spirit being your helper. You see, eternity is in your heart. And the, God's been wooing you and drawing you and saying, yes, 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 he's talking to you. You feel stuck. You can get unstuck with Jesus in your life. Would you stop for a moment and just bow your head with me right where you're at? And if you need to, if you've been away from the Lord and you're saying, if you're online or you're in this room and you've strayed, come on home, come on home, come on home. If you've never met Jesus for the first time, welcome home. Lord Jesus, I thank you to people listening to the sound of my voice. That, Lord, they will know, number one, that they're essential. That, God, you need them. Lord, that they will know that they're, they don't have to to be stuck. Lord, that they will know that the enemy does not have the upper hand in their life no matter what's going on in their life. They will know that, yes, people do want to hear the gospel. Yes, there's money to make the gospel go around. And yes, God, you want to use them significantly. If you need Jesus in your life, just pray this prayer with me right now. If you need to get back to the Lord, say it with me out loud. Everybody in the room, just help us out. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I've messed up. 
I've sinned. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to come into my life. Lord, would you give me a do-over? Would you make everything new in my life? I've been in charge of my life and I've done things my own way. And Lord, I, I'm sorry. I want you to be in charge from this day forward. Lord, you heard their cry. Come into their life. Fill them up with your spirit. Let them know that they're a new creature in Christ. I want to talk to you, that are, those of you that are Christ followers. I just believe that you need to know that God wants to use you. And if while you were sitting in your living room or sitting here in this room and you know that God wants to use you right where you're at, He wants to breathe on you. He wants to pour His Spirit out on you. He wants to use you right where you're at. And you heard that clearly today. Just slip your hand up right now. Even if you're in your living room, just slip it up. And just if you're in the room with me, slip it up and take it from where it's at in the air and put it over your, right over your heart right now with me. And say this out loud for me. Say, Lord Jesus. Use me. Use me. Use me. Lord, give them boldness. Use them. Amen. With every head up and every eye open looking here at me, as I said in my message, I'm so grateful that you've been so generous. And the way that you've been so generous is we've provided these ways you're going to see on the screen for you to give. They're all digital. You can give on our website. You can Use our app, Generations Lubbock. You can go to your Apple Store, your your uh, Google Play Store. Uh, you can, you know, you can mail it. You know, there's an address, a physical address of our church, or there's a PO box. But what? No. Or you, if you're in the room, you could give right here. There's a black brown box back there at the back of the room. Uh, we're not passing anything. You've just been generous to give if you want to. And we know that the generous soul will be refreshed is what the scripture said. We read that today. And there's a lot of you going to be refreshed in very big ways because you've been so generous. But there's giving tools. If you want to give cash, they're in the buckets on the tables. And you can just put that in there. And there's a slot in the top of that brown box. Just put it in there. And you'll get the proper giving credit for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're so grateful. Let me do one more thing before we close out with a song. Those of you that made a decision to follow Jesus today, we want to help you. We want to reach out to you. There's a couple of different things. Our website, generationslubbock.com. There's a button that says contact, drop down menu. Fill in your email and we'll reach out to you. you. Again, you can tell us in the app. You can get in the live stream. You can message Pastor Ed, Ed Ainsworth. I'm, I'm on Facebook. You can do, me, do an inbox message and say, hey, Pastor, I made a decision today. I want to help you. Any way we can serve you, disciple you, encourage you in your walk with God, your new journey, we want to do that. Lastly, if you're a first-time guest in the room or online, if you're in the room, there's a coffee mug out there for you. You can just grab it as you go out. But if you're online, I wish I had one of our But First Jesus coffee cups. If you'll let us know online that you are a first-time visitor with us, we'll hand-deliver your uh, coffee mug to you if you live in the Lubbock area. We'll be glad to do that. Father, I thank you for this service today. Thank you for all those that attended live. Lord, I'm grateful for their lives. I pray peace over them and strength over them and courage over them. Lord, those that have been online with us, I pray the same thing, strength, courage, boldness, peace. Lord, we thank you for it. And Lord, we're going to sing this song as we go out today called Do It Again. And Lord, we're believing you for a revival, a renewal, an awakening. Lord, do it again.